Good morning and welcome to the Leadership and Insurance Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Bond, and I'm very lucky today to be joined by Alvaro from uh, Cleveria, uh, which I'm hoping I said correctly. Um, <laughs> um, we were just, we were literally just off camera discussing um, where the name comes from, and I had a slight panic that I didn't know how to make it, but, uh, how to say it, but as uh, Alvaro will probably let us know, it's, it's a made up word, isn't it? It's not, um, it's... It, 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 it absolutely is a made up word. Uh, so, but anyway, before I tell you about it, uh, just let me thank you very much, Alex, uh, for uh, for having me in. Uh, you have an awesome program, and I'm quite proud to, to to be able to be in it. So, thank you for that. No, oh, no, thank you. No, that's very kind of you, and it's um, it's really kind of you to make the time because um, um, I, I'd have to tell everyone our little story. We were supposed to record this um, a week before, but I actually had a power cut, which I don't think has happened yeah. to me in years, and I and I couldn't. The worst, up the worst excuse I've ever been. Given. <laughs> yes, it's like. <laughs> Like the dog ate my homework, but I legitimately yeah. had a power cut, and, uh, <laughs> and it was it was quite funny. Um, but um, look, Alvaro, before we get stuck into things, it'd be really nice if you could introduce um, Cleveria and um, you know what you guys are trying to do there. Absolutely. Uh, so I'll try to summarize it in, in in a couple of sentences. So we always say we are a neo insurer, uh, but we what we really do is uh, we try to uh, innovate throughout the whole value chain of of insurance. And that is in the making of the insurance, all the way to distribution and all the way until uh, claims handling and whatnot. And in that sense, we target kind of a millennial customer uh, and, and we do mostly property and casualty for individuals. But we try to, to kind of uh, get innovation throughout those three, three spaces. So the making, the distributing and the kind of handling of claims. Okay. Perfect. Makes makes perfect sense. I mean, is is that the way you see it? Then is is the is the value in like because I suppose when you're tackling it like that, then you're you're adding value in maybe in small ways. It, yeah. you know, if you're making every little bit that bit easier, more cost effective, then the aggregate is you just get a better product. I think it's quite literally that. So we try to to make little increments, little improvements to most of the steps throughout the way. Uh, it's not just about having an awesome distribution if what you're distributing is not worth it, or if after distribution, it's going to be a mess in, 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 in claims handling or in the policy midterm adjustment, et cetera. Uh, so in that sense, we, we try to, to do just a small things one at a time, uh, hopefully getting a, a more rounded product. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, your, your branding's very, very good. I, I've always thought the branding of the business is very strong. Um, it looks very kind of much focused at the kind of millennial market. Um, what makes you different in, because there's a few kind of people fighting for that type of business at the moment. Um, is What specifically makes you guys different? Uh, so I think that 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 is a diff difficult question to answer. Uh, so what makes us different uh, with regards to uh, Mafre, which is one of the biggest uh, traditional companies here, I would say mostly everything. And uh, what makes us different versus uh, some other Instatex? Then there are a bit less differences. Uh, we, we try to, we, we have a very clear focus regarding, we want to do multi-product. Mm -hmm. We want to do, uh, the, the, the more things, the better throughout the, the value chain. And we want to do things digitally, technologically, but really without losing that human touch that I think it's very important within insurance as it is a difficult product or service to understand. And as such, we, we don't make just technology for the making of technology. We really try to, to enhance customer experience and, and improve uh, our internal processes. And of course, uh, one big difference with uh, traditional insurance is that we really are not scared to show our phone number. Uh, people can contact us through, I don't know, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, just the live chat, uh, phone, mail, whatever means they, they like. So, so we really want to be uh, as human as human as possible. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. That's something that's come up a lot. Um, and that might just be a personal preference for me. But um, um, I've always been quite strong on this podcast of saying that the only thing I can say is my opinion on these things. But I think it's really important, particularly to the claims process, is, is that you have 
all these different avenues of people getting in touch with you because i'm i'm a huge proponent of technology and look if i can sort something out on an app then i i prefer that but there's those times where you're stressed and you're trying to make a claim and you want to get hold of someone because you know the app yeah. might not might not be working the process might not be working for you and then you can't if you cannot if you have the inability to get hold of people i think that's um yeah that's a huge stress point for people it is and i would add another thing uh, that we try to make very clear and it's that what we really don't want to have is someone calling us and and this process that you usually have of okay i'll put you through whichever department and then they put you through uh, some other and then that person cannot do what you need them to do so it to be honest we're trying to build something that every single one that gets on the phone can do anything that the client needs uh, and so you don't just keep constantly jumping around departments and, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's, that's a bit of, of the, the, the philosophy behind it. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be interesting to see how you tackle that when you scale. Do you, do you, is that it will be interesting. Yeah. So, so hopefully, I mean, if we build the, the internal tools and internal processes that allow it, we should be fine. So we have some cool reference here uh, cool references here in Spain, uh, not within the, the insurance industry, but within some other industries. Some people were doing cool things in, in energy, some people doing cool things in telco, uh, that they really trick customers uh, amazingly well. And they, they are just differentiating themselves uh, through that. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, those, those two things that I mentioned, those two industries are a bit of a commodity. So, uh, it doesn't matter where you plug your, your phone, but it will work. It doesn't matter which company is behind it. So customer support is, is important there. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, and I think I'm, a, I think we're very, um, and we'll get, we'll get onto you, your founding team's background. I think that's really important because I think, I think the important thing about insurance is bringing in the best bits of, you know, other industries. And that may just be their customer service. You know, um, yeah, hmm. I, I think, you know, the most obvious example of any, good kind of customer focused business at the moment is probably amazon you know like amazon it's a very lazy analogy but amazon kind of gone what are the pain points for customers yeah. um, and now that level of service is ubiquitous right you know i i'm one of these people that's i'm very guilty of if i can't get a product delivered tomorrow i'm not yeah. <laughs> no, i'm just not interested yeah. <laughs> and then if i have to pay for the privilege then i'm furious but you know but yeah. it's very easy it's very interesting how quickly the the, the change of um, expectations happens, and and I think it's important yeah. that you keep up to date with what other businesses are doing, and it might be telco, or it might be uh, energy. Yeah. So, so you talk about immediacy, and that's a very important concept. And I think, uh, for example, insurance, I believe it's the only industry in the world where you have uh, kind of the the tarification uh, happening at at one time. And maybe the, the actual purchase or emission of the policy, it might take hours or days, which is something that we could not believe when we arrived in insurance. How the heck is it possible that I cannot just purchase my insurance and, and kind of be, be it emitted? And, and if you think about it, it's just like, okay, I go online in a, in a, at a bicycle shop and, and uh, I answer some questions and they give me a price. And then I try to buy it and they say, no, do you have to wait a little bit? Or, and it's just weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to the extent possible, we always try to do it fast and, yeah. and, and easy to do. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, yeah, not putting delays in where there doesn't need to be. So, yeah. but that, let's bring, let's, let's take it back actually, because we're sort of getting into the nitty gritty. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you've got a founding team of, is it three of you guys that started the business? It is. It is three of us. Although uh, there are three of them. So it's three of us. It's my, my colleague, uh, Joan, and his uh, twin brother, Javier. Um, so yeah, I, I met Joan uh, when we both were working in, in strategy consulting at Oliver Wyman in Madrid. Uh, it was the very same day that we kind of uh, got accepted and, and came into Oliver Wyman. And it was the very same day that, that we left. Uh, and then obviously I know Javier because he's uh, John's brother. Uh, and actually last year uh, in, 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 in Madrid, we, we lived together as, as flatmates. Uh, so that was pretty cool. That was kind of the, the, the first steps of, of Cleveria. 
Yeah. Um, and then I, I, I wanted to say that, let's say when we decided to get into insurance, uh, we were very, very uh, conscious of what our, um, what we were lacking, so to say. Uh, and, and going into, into something as specific as insurance, you need to know about regulation as it, it is a highly regulated uh, business. Mm -hmm. You need to, even though it's a huge market, the, the kind of insurance world as, as regards to people, it's kind of small. Uh, and so you need contacts, you need a bit of experience. So that was the second thing we were lacking. And, and of course we were lacking uh, actual technological uh, development capabilities. Uh, we're, we're not the developers. And so the uh, first thing we did within the first month or two months was just tackling those three things that we were lacking. And so we partner with, uh, with a law firm specialized in, in, in uh, regulatory insurance uh, law. Um, it's a, a small boutique firm. We partnered with uh, an already existing MG MGA, mm -hmm. uh, very traditional, 40 years in the industry, but, but with lots of contacts. And we partnered with a CTO uh, that has done an amazing job. And so that was kind of the, the, the first steps into what Clever AI is today those kind of six components. Mm. So you didn't know anything about the regulation. You didn't have any tech skills. You didn't know anything about insurance. <laughs> so, quite literally, quite so, literally, yeah. So why, why, why insurance? Why, why, why did you come to that conclusion that that's the business that yeah. you wanted to make? So I think, I think there are three, three main points, I would say. One is insurance is kind of messed up and, and has not kept up with other industries in, in adapting to what is expected today by customers. So that, that, that there was an opportunity there to improve things. Another thing is that um, it's always good to, to not be, uh, how, how do I say, contaminated or, or polluted by, by years and years of experience in one industry because then you're going to do the, th the, the things the same way they have been done. Um, so, so, so that was important. And the other one is that insurance is, is incredibly huge. And so uh, if you get there and you do things right, the, the opportunity is very large. So, so those were the main three reasons. But then again, we were very conscious of we, what we were lacking, but we also knew that we could do a good job, um, which I think we're at least trying to do. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I wanted to ask you this question and I had this down and it's like, obviously, were you thinking that insurance was broken? Because there's a lot of people that come outside looking in um, or was it just, it's not all broken. There's just some bits that need fixing that could be better. No, of course, it's not all broken. Uh, and when you get in, do you, you, you understand many, many things? Uh, but I think it's, it needs to be better explained. I need, it, it needs to... Uh, be better distributed. I need. Uh, I, I think that the customer service should imp should improve a lot. I think there hasn't been any improvements or, or innovation in in the products themselves. So there were many many things that are improvable. And uh, again, you 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 have dozens of players. It's not hundreds or thousands. So so very few multinationals with decades in the industry uh, and so they, they have these legacy systems they cannot really innovate quite a lot uh, so so yeah the opportunity was there mm -hmm. yeah no totally understand so what have you what has surprised you the most like what what are the things are there some right i suppose let's let's split that down what's the most surprising thing you've learned about the insurance industry that um yeah, since you got into it, what, what do you think has been the biggest kind of learn for you? So one of the things I would say is uh, you always hear insurance, it needs to be this intermediated, uh, it should be more online, direct purchase in a website, et cetera, et cetera. And, and of course, online penetration, uh, a D2C uh, sales should increase, that's for sure. But we really understand now that the insurance makes total sense uh, to, to be intermediated and it makes total sense uh, 
especially property and casualty, makes it for a total sense to be uh, close to the time and or place uh, of purchase of the, of the main product, be it a car or a home or a, or a trip, I don't know. But yeah, that was one of the, the, the big misconceptions that we had. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, are there any of those things which you thought were, you thought, oh, insurance has got this covered. And then when you came in, there's something that you did learn was broken that you weren't expecting. Yeah, so, so one of the things that surprised me a lot, I mentioned before, and is the, that break between uh, tarification and, and policy emission. Yes. That's something we, we, we were astonished to find out, <laughs> uh, but literally, quite literally. Uh, another thing that was, yeah, this is more of a, an anecdote, but, but so when we started off, uh, one of the things that is important for you to be able to sell is to have your uh, payment platform how do you call that um so your stripe on, on or, or whatnot uh and <laughs> we had like 15 conversations with different providers and it was a rejection after a rejection because in all of them insurance is at the same level and i'm not joking as pornography arms uh gambling and whatever and we were like why <laughs> it's a regulated business we have our licenses so that was a surprise as well it was it was it was a fight yeah <laughs> i like it interesting yeah. um so the operating model are you are you set up as an mga um at the moment yes yeah. so we are set up as an mga uh the mj figure it's uh not very well known in, in Spain. So uh, the concept of MGA, I think in Spain, there are like 50 to so five zero. Uh, and, and I think all of them, but Cleverea are very niche, uh, initially focused on, I don't know, petrol stations or DNO for professionals or very, very like niche markets. Mm-hmm. So, so MGA is like like Cleverea in Spain. I, I think, well, it's only Cleverea, I would say. Uh, but yeah, it, it was when we had our first conversations with uh, with Spanish uh, insurance companies, they quite literally did not understand what we wanted because they did not know uh, what an MGA was. Uh, but it, it was very clear for us that we needed to be an MGA uh, in the sense that if we wanted to innovate throughout those things that I mentioned, it was not just a matter of distribution, distributing some other's products. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, we're set up in San MGA, yes. And where, um, where are you based again? You're based in? We're based in Barcelona. Oh, Barcelona. Um, yes. Uh, so, we, we started Cleverea in, in Madrid, mm-hmm. uh, but that was just kind of a temporary thing because we, uh, we left our jobs and we, we lived in Madrid. But we, we always had it pretty clear that we wanted to move to, uh, to Barcelona, which I believe it's better positions in terms of, uh, of a startup uh, ecosystem and, and technology, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to ask you, um, actually, yeah, I was, before I jump away from the MGA piece, um, obviously the kind of MGA model, um, is, is there a point in the future where you'd look to go to a full stack insurer model? Is is there is there right now a benefit to you doing that? Uh, is it something you consider? So it's something we have considered and we are considering. Um, just last week, I was I was uh, in conversation with uh, one of our lawyers, uh, who, who also is uh, kind of uh, a shareholder of the company. Uh, just about starting to think about that. What are the implications? What would be the process? What do we need to do? When could it happen? So that we have kind of a very clear picture uh, that if we want to do it, uh, what do we need to do? Uh, but again, this has been very much discussed. There are multiple benefits of being a, an insurance company and multiple disadvantages. Uh, overall, I would say the benefits outweigh the disadvantages. So it's something we might look into uh, in, in the future. Uh, it allows you for, for uh, flexibility, uh, without anyone to, to convince, so to say, but yourself. 
It allows you to launch uh, the products that you want to launch as you want to launch them. It allows you to, to expand into other markets. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think it's something we will look into. Mm -hmm. And so, so let's talk about that, actually, products and markets. At the moment, are you only operating in, in, in the Spanish market at the moment? Yes, so as of today, we are only in Spain. Uh, we're already preparing our jump to uh, Portugal, uh, hopefully this summer. And, and we see Portugal as a unique opportunity of, of a proof of concept, so to say. So it's kind of a small country, not that small, but kind of a small country, uh, with the benefit of being very close to Spain, uh, with very uh, many cultural similarities, uh, and in that regard, it's kind of the first step, a first proof of concept of what do we need to do to just take Cleveria, move it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And if we do that right, then it, it would be much easier to just start doing that into other countries, uh, particularly within the European Union uh, mm -hmm. due to the, the passport rights. But then who knows, probably, uh, but th yeah, that's more in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't talk to us about the European Union. We get a bit sensitive. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. UK, yeah, UK, yeah. I know, I know. What a crazy, what a crazy world. I mean, it's it's, it's actually strange to get my head around that because I always said, oh, I'll definitely go and work in Europe, and uh, I still very much might do, but um, it's not as not as easy yeah. as it was. But um, and then on the product front, um, you how many products are you now offering currently? What you so uh, we currently have. Let's say we currently have products in travel and products in mobility, and I'll get into the details now. Uh, but basically, we, we try to work two concepts. One is the, the uh, breadth, and the other one is depth. So we try to, to build multiple verticals and multiple products within those verticals. And then the depth is, okay, so you have, let's say, kick scooter, but then we're working into kick scooters for professional use. We're working into kick scooter for rentals. We're looking into kick scooters for fleet. Mm -hmm. We're looking into kick scooters for uh, company owned vehicles that the employees use. So that's kind of the depth that we also want to, 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 mm -hmm. to work. Uh, in mobility, we have uh, bike insurance and, and um, kick scooter insurance, and we have motorbike insurance. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, we're working into that deepening of, of uh, the, those products. And within travel, we have uh, three kind of small coverages, which are baggage insurance, uh, flight delay insurance, which is parametric, and, and missed connection insurance. But as you can imagine, it's very much deprioritized now. And then now, uh, I think mid-April, we will be launching uh, a renter's deposit insurance, uh, which is, I think it will be very special here in Spain because uh, there's nothing like it, although uh, it's already known in the US, UK, mm -hmm. uh, and, and some other countries. But here in Spain, there is nothing like it. Uh, so, so hopefully it will go well. And we're already preparing our home insurance uh, for homeowners and for renters. Uh, and that's a bit different down the line, but maybe Q4 2021. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're going for the multi-line, multi-product buyer. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the depth thing is... I suppose the depth, once you know that that part of the market, the, the point is to capitalize on that. There's no point understanding kick it scooters and only selling it to professionals. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, regarding the, the multi-line approach, we, we really believe that there, there are so many uh, energies, so many synergies in, in being multi-line uh, that, that they cannot be disregarded. So, I mean, not only in... Uh, technology that of course the, the more products that we launch the faster we launch them mm -hmm. uh, not only in distribution so it's much simpler to convince the partner like a new bank a bank a telco uh, to to just sell your products if you're able to give them kind of the whole package mm -hmm. uh, you're also you have uh, synergies within uh, the risk carriers or the insurance companies that you work with because they already know you they trust you uh, if you're if one product you have with them is working well, they should be more, more, much more inclined to, to work with you in another one. So there are many, many, many synergies. And then again, the, the cross-selling is fundamental to the concept of insurance. So 
by being multi-product, we, we, we should be able to have higher, uh, or, or we should be able to, to, yeah, to be able to have higher acquisition cost because those customers will be able to purchase uh, more than one product. Mm -hmm. So total delivers in a multi-product approach. I, I'll, I'll add one thing, and it's, if you think about uh, successful insurance companies, at least traditional ones, you will not find anyone that is single line, so to say. Uh, so unless you talk about health, which I understand because it's very specific, the rest really are all multi, multi line. Mm -hmm. And even within health, you, you don't get health insurer that doesn't offer yeah. effectively kind of variations on that. And, and, and the, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. No, I completely agree. And it's, well, at the end of the day, it's the business of risk, isn't it? And, and you're spreading your risk by being into multiple lines. Yeah, absolutely. So just to give you an example, we, <laughs> Clever Air was launched with travel insurance, which mm -hmm. looking back, wasn't the, the greatest of ideas. Yeah. But if, if you're, if, if we only, at that line, we, we, we would be dead, quite literally. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a risk diversification strategy as well, as you mentioned. Mm. Yeah, sensible. How did you guys go, get off the ground in terms of kind of funding? Did you, did you go out and get some external funding? And, and what was the process like for that? So what we did is uh, we kicked off Cleverea with uh, 20K per uh, partner, so John, Javier, and myself, that was 60K. Uh, with that 60K, we were able to build a little bit of a, of a POC, uh, develop the idea, kind of close those gaps that I mentioned before, build kind of the foundation of a team. Mm -hmm. And with that, we were able to, to raise uh, our seed round, something like that. Yeah. Uh, we, we raised something like 800K euros or so. And with that, we've been able to just launch all the products that I've mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we're now planning our next round. Okay. So that, that, was, that was it. And um, I wanted to talk to you about the kind of uh, insure tech market in Spain. And, 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 but, but before that, probably what's the, what's the investment landscape like in, in, in the Spanish marketplace? Do you, is there a active VC community, or is it kind of more of a European wide pool of people that you sort of integrate with? What was been your experience on that side? So I think, I think uh, from a funding perspective, Spain is quite active. Uh, mm -hmm. It has been so for some years now, although uh, in Spain, we're, we're always a bit behind uh, the, the main trend lines of uh, UK, US, Germany, uh, then France might come a bit later and then uh, probably Italy and Spain, but, but we do have uh, very active investors here. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we have found out is that uh, building what we're trying to build and, and convincing uh, investors to just jump in and, and believe in what you're doing, uh, it's kind of difficult. And, and I believe it's difficult for various factors. One is uh, we're not in, in the US or the UK, which is incredibly uh, huge. We're in Spain. And so unless you demonstrate that you have a European ambition, then it's too small of the market, even though it's, it's really big, but, but uh, for some, it, it's a bit small. And another thing is that there hasn't been any too successful startup in the Insutech business uh, ever in Spain. Uh, so there, ha there are now uh, some, some few players that are, are doing things very well, but it's just a starting. Uh, so we're a bit like three, four years behind uh, well, the, 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 the countries I just mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that there is something about the kind of getting enough momentum from the kind of sense community. Because do you find those communities, um, do you think communities are important to be in that? Because it's interesting that you guys, have, you moved from Madrid and you sort of said, we knew we were going to have to go to Barcelona. And um, is the Barcelona to community kind of better than on the startup basis then? I, I wouldn't say it's better to get funded. Right. I would say it's uh, a better place to build a, a strong team, at least from a technology perspective. Fine, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, but, but Madrid is, is 
really, I, 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 I wouldn't diminish Madrid at all. No, 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 no. No, uh, I love them both. I'm, I'm a big fan of both cities, actually. I've spent yeah. a lot of time in both. But um, I, I didn't know... It's interesting with the little insure tech communities. Um, how much are they sort of... Do you, do you think they're important from a just morality standpoint? Because it's hard, right? It's a hard thing to do, right? You've taken a very hard path in starting a business. Is it useful to be around other people, you know, doing the same thing? Or, or is the community not really kind of established like that because i know there's other hubs and you know like there's some guys in paris and they've got some really good startup hubs there and it's just being around like-minded people trying to do the same challenges really it's always uh heartwarming uh, to see other successful startups that are just next door mm-hmm. that that's always amazing and and we have several examples here in, in barcelona it's not maybe that we have a direct contact with them but knowing that they are there, that, that it's possible to do it, it, it really, uh, yeah, gives, gets your spirit up. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to talk about talent because that's my area of expertise, I suppose. <laughs> and, um, you know, you, you said very early on you managed to get a CTO. Um, how did that come about? How did, you, how did you find your CTO partner? Yeah, that was... Yeah, we were lucky as hell, to be honest. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, because it's not easy to to just jump into a project with people you don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we when we started with Sergio, uh, he was living in Barcelona. We were in Madrid. It, it was not the ideal condition. So basically, we just found him through LinkedIn. So we targeted, I think, yeah, between. 20 and 30 uh, people that we liked, uh, just looking at that profile. We sent direct messages to them, very kind of targeted. Uh, many of them, as you can imagine, did not even answer, but, but a few of them did. Um, and so we, we ended up meeting a couple of them and, and we really enjoyed the way Sergio approached it. So what he told us is, listen guys, let, let's do the following. Um, I don't know you, uh, it would be a bit crazy of me to just leave my job. He was in, in, in Wallapop, which is a very uh, successful startup here in, in, in Barcelona. It would be a bit crazy to just leave everything behind and, and go with people I don't even know. Uh, so let's do the following. I, I promise you guys, I will be on top of everything. I'll continue working in Wallapop. I'll dedicate my uh, evenings and my weekends to Cleverea. Uh, I'll, we went through a development uh, agency at the beginning, so I'll control them, I'll, I'll guide them, I'll, I'll give input, et cetera, et cetera, so that in those few three, four months uh, until you guys kind of move to Barcelona, we get to know each other, I get to know the way you work, uh, I get a, a, a better feeling of how the project is looking, and then I can commit to a, to the fully commit, so to say. So we, we really thought that that was a very intelligent way to approach it yeah yeah it's, i mean it's it's a very generous way to approach it as well because yeah. you, know, you could have got to the point of saying you know these guys don't know what they're doing or it's not a good match and you know w- yeah. were you ever nervous that he might not commit full time and then you, you know no. no 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 so so yeah this isn't humble at all to say but but we really are comfortable and 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 confident of on the way we work and, and the things we do. So we know that when people work with us, they are happy, they're comfortable, they, they feel that, that we're professional, that we uh, are 100% dedicated to what we do. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we, we never uh, thought of it as a risk of him living. Mm-hmm. I love that. I think you need that. I think you need that confidence as well. And do you think it helps that you guys are all friends? Can you, you trust each other's skill sets? Yeah, it helps. Uh, yeah, a crazy lot. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah even way. even even Joan and Javier are, are are twin brothers, so so the connection is even even greater. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, sorry, of course. Do you, do you ever get um <laughs> do you ever get overruled by the brothers making the decision, or is it? <laughs> no, it's it, it's quite democratic actually. It's good to be three, uh, because yeah it's always easy to incline the balance one way or another. So uh, we never have trouble in that regard. We, we uh, kind of 
put out our position in a certain topic, we discuss it, uh, we try to understand the other ways of thinking, and then we come up to a solution. But it's not a long discussion and, and a loud discussion, it's just let's talk about this and, and let's keep going. So once we make a decision, we compromise to that decision, there is kind of no looking back to, I told you like we, we should have done it. So, so in that regard, we work really well together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've often said, I think one of the challenges is like people start businesses in pairs and I've always kind of been a bit uncomfortable with that because, you know, I, I was in a partnership when I first started my business and um, you know, very rarely, we gen- generally agreed, but if we didn't agree, you've just yeah, got this, you've just got this <laughs> meeting of going, well, I don't agree. And, and it's actually really hard to move forward. Um, but as long as, and as long as you kind of got the, the ability to vote and, you know, say two against yeah. one, fine, but let's just go forward because momentum's everything, right? Yeah. In, in any case, we haven't found that many uh, situations in which the three of us has a very strong view about a thing. Uh, so normally to just have a view, it's, it might not be very strong. Uh, on the top of your mind, you think like this, but maybe the other guy has just really gave it a thought have arguments to defend his position, and then I'm more than happy to just uh, listen to them and, and understand it and change my mind. So there, there's no problem there. Mm. How did you um, decide on who sits in what role and what, and what roles have you ended up putting yourselves in? Because yeah. yeah. So how we, yeah, when we first started uh, Cleverea in, in, in our dining room, so to say, uh, we literally, yeah, it was funny because when you start the business, it's a bit like, well, uh what what do we do now <laughs> so there is no one there is no one calling there is no one just writing emails to you and so on so so we literally had a a, a whiteboard and we just bullet by bullet wrote down activities that we wanted to carry out yeah. and at the beginning it was just okay you take this i take this and, and it was just let's go by order uh, but then as this got more serious and and we definitely needed to kind of each other focus on something. Uh, we had a conversation and, and kind of uh, we, uh, let's say we gave hats to each other and you have the hat of sales and you have the hat of uh, legal and you have uh, finance and you have whatnot. So we, we divided things a little bit by let's say departments. And in that regard, uh, so myself, uh, I'm in charge of, of sales, marketing and everything related to, to legal because I, I, I studied law. Yeah. Uh, although, yeah, I, I put it through to the lawyers, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Javier, Javier is more in charge of uh, finance, be it internal, so controlling, reporting, uh, accounting, and external, so everything related to finance, to funding, apologies, mm-hmm. uh, he is in charge. Uh, and, and then Joanne is more in charge of, of the product slash uh, tech and additionally on the relationship uh, with, with insurance carriers. So mm-hmm. that's the way we have approached it. And then of course, uh, the, the bigger we are, we start just giving out responsibilities to people that we trust. Uh, so the first responsibility we kind of handed out was the, the technology that was for Sergio. We will be looking now for uh, a head of marketing. So I will give that hat away, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a, a bit of the way we're doing it. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a very balanced kind of way of doing things. I mean, it's- it's funny that um, I still remember that moment. I remember the first day of like setting up and me and my business partner sat yeah. there and I started like laughing and it was just this funny thing of going, if no one, no one's telling me to do anything, I've just got, yeah. I'm, and I've got a right, I guess I, and you almost have to break down your job again and go, right, okay, what, yeah. what is my role now? Like, what do I do? And you have to make it up for yourself. And it's, yeah. it's very freeing, but it's also kind of, um, it's something we're not we're not sort of structured for. The society that we work in is very much about there are people in charge and they give you things to do. You do those things, you go home. And then yeah. the life of an entrepreneur is very much not that. So no, it's 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 quite contrary to that. So so yeah, we don't have we're not afraid of, of doing other things besides the one we are supposed to do. Of course. So I'm constantly and that is because we're just a small team for now, but we're I'm constantly just replying chats uh, for customers. I'm constantly WhatsApping customers. I, I have a look at, at social media. I have a look at, at uh, some operations that need to be done. So yeah, we're always help, helping out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> Someone was telling me the other day that they just 
uh, one of my podcast guests and he was saying that he just did this huge fundraise. He's got this, the fund the fund money had come in and then the first task he had after that was to go and take the bins out because they were overflowing in the office. And, you know, <laughs> and I was like, that is perfect. That's exactly what it's, what it's all about. Yeah. Um, well, I'm conscious of time. We're sort of approaching the kind of best part of the hour mark. So I just wanted to give, to give you a chance to talk about, um, I know you've talked about geographies and territories. Is that the kind of priority next? Is the new, the new, the new sort of products, and then the new geographies? Yeah, anything else on the horizon? Uh, so the, yes, the, the, those are two big things. So so those are the main ones. Uh, but we have a, a pretty full twenty twenty one. So we have. Uh, so I'll, I'll just mention them. But we have, in terms of products, we're going to launch uh, professional use for bikes and kick scooters, rental for bikes and kick scooters and fleet management for uh, bike and kick scooters. We'll be launching a uh, theft cover for uh, our motorbike insurance. We'll be launching a road assistance for our bike and kick scooter insurance. We'll be launching in Portugal with uh, starting with mobility mm -hmm. and we'll be launching in April the renter's deposit insurance and Q4 ideally home insurance. Wow. So that's kind of a full plate <laughs> and, and and then probably raising some money at some point this year as well right I presume. yes yes <laughs> yes hopefully hopefully yes <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's pretty busy that's a that's a busy slate and um you you mentioned that you're looking for a marketing person how how big's the team now what, what, what how many how many of you are there so starting from next tuesday will be 17 we're currently 16 we have uh someone coming for the customer support uh, road uh, someone just to put a bit order and 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 just manage that. Uh, so we're 17 now. Uh, basically, the the focus at the beginning, first year and a half, to be honest, was on on regulation and on technology and product development. Mm -hmm. And now we're a little bit shifting towards sales, marketing, uh, PR, social media, uh, customer support, th th those kind of things that that come with you selling something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once you but, sell but but again, if you give me twenty people, I, they will have something to do for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, no, it's exciting time. But uh, it's it's really exciting, um, and I, I'm really excited to see what you guys are up to. Um, I, it's the, 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 the Spanish tech market and insure tech market is yeah. I've, I've started to see the kind of green shoots, and there's a few more people joining you in that market. Um, yeah, and hopefully when. When we're allowed to travel again, won't lie. Spain's probably higher on my list than places to go and to kind of meet some meet some people. So hopefully we can do it face to face one day. But um, that would be awesome, yeah. Yeah, but Alvaro, thank you so much for being flexible and rescheduling after my poorly. Excuse. Not a problem. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for being a guest on the the lip. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Alex. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>